Oh, uh, which, which, which way do I go? Okay, so if you had to go backwards, because you've kind of touched on this already, like these young people who are interested in getting into food and mm -hmm. they're seeing that you can explore it from these new platforms and new angles and network in ways that they've never seen before and the slew of inspiration is like endless. Mm -hmm. Put yourself in the shoes of someone who is where you were when you kind of made it, had to make some of these decisions, when you wanted to get into food. What would you do differently if you were like 2021? 20, uh, right away, I would, I will probably, it's hard to answer something like this because I really, this is going to sound again generic and stupid, but I really don't have many regrets because I wouldn't be where I am today. And I'm, I again know I have so much to do and there's like, you know, I'm by far like, there's a lot to learn. Yeah. There's a lot of more messing up to do, but I would um, probably just put myself deep in the shit. Like I would go to like the dopest restaurant in town and I would start as a prep cook and I would just like work my way up. Like I honestly kind of did that when I, like after I graduated, I wanted, I was, you know, a dishwasher. They didn't have any back of the house roles and I was trying to get like a, a prep cook. But then like sometimes when it would be slow, I would work as a prep cook and I would like shuck corn. I would like cut corn. I would like, cut, you know, basic dumb mm -hmm. prep stuff. Not dumb. It had to be done. Yeah, you know what I mean? Totally. Like, redundant yeah, probably. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. um, and I got back there and, uh, and, and did that. But, you know, the thing is, is that I wasn't staying in my college town. I had plans to move back. So it was almost kind of like I did it. I did it to cross off the dishwasher mm -hmm. grind on my life journey. And I think that that's kind of a good mentality to have. It's not, not like just get it done and forget about it. But you just got to get back there and like, dude, take a job as a dishwasher. Like, dude, you're not too good. Like, I guarantee you're not too good. <laughs> like, right. Get back there. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and I would like to have probably had a little more industry experience just because like I think that uh, flexing the sort of like sense of urgency that comes with that is a great thing that I didn't realize was so important. Like even in my private chef job, right? Sometimes I have the luxury of cooking dinner for three people, taking my time, mm -hmm. putting it out sort of almost, almost on my, like in my schedule, like when it's done, they're happy to eat, you know, uh, which is amazing. But then like, you know, there are also events where people are ready and you need to be like, things need to be plated and out the door by like X, you know? And I think that that sense of urgency, if you know how to like react to that and, and, and work with it and be good at that, then you're going to be able to cook in a chill environment too, very easily. So do you I have a favorite restaurants. stage that you've done? Well, I've done one stage, the Elska one, the Elska stage. Yeah. And, um, and it was, it was, it was cool. I learned a lot and I, I was planning and I still do plan on doing more. Um, but I actually, unfortunately COVID cut that off cause I had plans and I was talking to a couple of chefs and of course COVID hit and my clients would have been, it was just not a good thing. And, um, you know, now that we're kind of recovering and my, uh, my social media presence has sort of, uh, started on this upward trend, I'm sort of focusing on that, but I still know that I have, uh, you know, I got to put time in for like furthered education. And I do like, I'm reading all the time, obviously and practicing all the time, but there's something different than staging, you know, staging is the whole, the next thing. Um, learned a lot at Elska. Let's just say it was that a uh, four days of intense, fast learning. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm really glad you did that. Like yeah. I, I know you were like <laughs> chomping to do it yeah. and like get the exposure and like, <laughs> I'm really glad that you did that. It was fun. Let's, let's just say I still might have fava beans under my fingernails. Yeah, like, oh, I got my French laundry job. Yeah? I'm shucking raw fava beans. Dude. Until my thumbnail bled. Bled. It yeah, bleeds. nice. Me too. How about yeah, yeah, it's like, what are you going to say? Like, <laughs> they nothing. tell you to do it, and yeah. they're like, hey, don't stop shucking until the box is Well, gone. I told you that funny story. I mean, you definitely, like when I was like, he was like, do you want to go upstairs? Yes. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> I get called, well, I'm upstairs at Elsco, and... The night's winding down. It's my last day of the stage. I don't know anything about stage culture. And, you know, we had talked about this. It's different in every city. Right. In Chicago, there's a very, I guess you can call it a healthy stage culture. People are always staging. Restaurants are very welcoming. And <laughs> a thing you do at the end of your stage is they, you, you go up and you eat, right? You change. You sit at the bar. They get you drunk. They fill you up with food, whatever you want, as much as you want. And then, you know, that's like the last two of your stage. I didn't know that. So... <laughs> I'm sitting at the Garbon J station, hands uh, sort of like behind my back, you know, like just trying, you know, waiting for the next order with my like team, my guys who were there too. And um, chef comes up to me and he's like, and he's like, why don't you go downstairs and pack up, come back upstairs when we're done. And I'm like, yeah, chef. And I go downstairs and as I'm walking down the stairs, I'm like, what did I fucking do? You're like I'm getting sent home. No, I'm like, why am I getting sent home? The last, at the, at the 11th hour of the last day of my like 
stage. Like I know I didn't do anything wrong. Like I had been yelled at a couple of times. I did stuff wrong, but I had cleaned up my, you know, I've been doing good ever since a couple of scoldings. And, um, I come back up and I, he's like, go stand by the host. And I'm like, okay. So I'm sitting by the host and I tell him, she's like, Hey, like, well, it's like this, I don't know. It's my girl, like young girl. And she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, chef told me to stand over here. I think I'm like in trouble. And then she's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to like stand with you. I don't know what's going on. And she's like, you're not eating. And I'm like, no, I'm not. What? No. And she's like, no, no, you're not eating. And I'm like, no, like chef just told me to stand over here. And she's like, hold on. So she goes, talks to David and she looks at me and she's like, you're eating. And I'm like, what, what are you saying? And she's like, go sit at the bar. You guys, you can order food and drinks and whatever else. And, and then like my stomach sort of like, you know, my white knuckles turned back to normal. And, um, and I sat at the bar and I talked to the bartender and I ordered like six plates of things and they sent out random stuff. And it was just like such an amazing end to such like this crazy few days of like hectic, like learning that, uh, it was just like, it was, a, I'm, it was very like romantic. I was kind of, was kind of sitting there like side, I, you know, drink a couple of cocktails and not too many cause I had to drive home. <laughs> but, and, and, you know, I talked and I met some cool people and I still talk to some of them. So even to this day, and it was only for three days that are, or I'm sorry, like five days that I was there. So, so many nights there. Like, yeah, stodging can be this incredible thing for you if you're willing to, like you said, continue the networking after the fact. Mm -hmm. If you're willing to, like, put in the because it is a very emotional thing when you get to eat the food that you've been like prepping. For yeah. years and, years. and for me, when I was stodging early on, it put it so into perspective of like, fuck, I'm at the bottom of the mountain. Because I'd look at the dishes that... Because I thought I was, like, quote-unquote busy. I was like, I did a lot of prep stuff today. Mm -hmm. And then I would sit at a meal and I would eat it. And I'd be like, there's, like, three things I can point to in what I just ate <laughs> that I did. And there's, like... This was back in, like, early molecular... French laundry days. days? Yeah, well, it was, like, each dish had, like, seven or eight components right. on it. And you just realize how, like, oh, my God. This is, like, a true brigade. It's, like, yeah. a real team effort. This is, like... And it really put it all in, and you get to like do it from the guest side because it's like back house can suck sometimes, you know. Right. And to get to experience it from the guest side was really special. And they treat you like you're a guest. Already. Like they walked up to me, and it was like these guys who I had just been chilling with the past week, and we've been like bullshitting, and mm -hmm. like you know, like I was getting to know them better, and like eating staff meal before service with them, and they come up to me and they they're talking to me like I'm like some sort of like royalty. They show me the dish and they like explain the dish even though I know what it is and they're like, enjoy. Yeah. And they walk away and I'm like, dude, chill. Like, what do you do? <laughs> like, I wanted to like drink with them and stuff, but they're like working and I'm like, this is just so wild. I feel like it's, yeah, it was cool. It just, I, I feel like it's a, and you, you touched on it in your reaction to getting the opportunity to eat where you're like, oh, I can't possibly. And it's like, no, you should. Like this becomes a full experience when you actually do that. And that's what I think is really interesting and like hopefully a takeaway for someone eating or eating someone listening who is gets that opportunity and it's like it's not bad like it's not seen as bad I I, I don't see it if you say that you're hot shit and you're gonna get drunk at the bar wait I'm sorry I, what what's not bad what's not bad eating after a oh no I know and like, it might you do feel a little weird and you guilty feel super weird because you're sitting there and people are still cleaning up and working a little bit and you're yep. sitting there like eating and they're you serving shift you. early basically. right right it's so it it's feels so, weird yep yeah um whether it's during the stage and the chef gives you that opportunity, or mm -hmm. if it's the next weekend and you want to come have a meal, right. absolutely do it. I mm -hmm. just think it like completely caps the experience. I had a stage in Scandinavia and I didn't eat. Mm -hmm. It was one of like my biggest regrets. That's a thing, right? Uh, like, did they feed you after your stage? Is that like no? Because this was like this was five days, so I worked all five days. There was mm -hmm. not realistically an opportunity in that week for mm -hmm. me to go eat, and I had a couple of extra days in Copenhagen and I didn't eat. And I regret it. I ended up coming back and getting the opportunity to eat. Nice. This was months later. The team was a little bit different, mm -hmm. so I didn't have that same connection. Yeah. Um, but if you're listening and you're about to go on a stage, I think Adam and I both agree you should definitely. 100%. Find a way to eat. It, it, it puts you to the path. Yeah.